Good evening and warm welcome to State of Business at TV's Prime Time News Bulletin with me, Rukshi Panditaratna. Let's take a look at the headlines first. Fourth intergeneration dialogue on population aging in Sri Lanka held today. And WHO representative to Sri Lanka highlights the importance of executing mental health care facilities. And today on Top Stories, the United National Population Fund together with the Department of Census and Statistics held its fourth intergenerational dialogue under the theme Aging Population in Sri Lanka and its Policy Implications in Colombo today. At the dialogue, a thematic report on population aging in Sri Lanka jointly published by the United National Population Fund and Department of Census and Statistics was disseminated. The first copy of this report was presented earlier this week to the Minister of Social Empowerment, Welfare and Candian Heritage at the national event marking the International Elders' Day. The United Nations Population Fund's Generation to Generation Dialogues aim to bring three generations together to collectively voice opinions on issues relating to Sri Lanka's socio-economic development. Highlighting the importance of seeing aging as a triumph of development, the Asia-Pacific Regional Director of the United Nations Population Fund, John Anderson, stated that the country is continuously experiencing one of the fastest aging populations in the developing world due to its speedy demographic transition. And as we know, the world is aging rapidly, not only in Sri Lanka. And people aged 60 years and older make up over 12% of the world's population today. And by 2050, this number will increase to almost 22%. A fifth of, of the world's population will be uh, 60 years and older. In the Asia-Pacific region, the number of older people is projected to rise at a pace and a scale which is unmatched elsewhere in the world. And together with, as, or as part of the International Conference on Population and Development, and the program of action, uh, aging is one of many important aspects that UNFPA is working on. And it is a priority area for us in this region. And indeed, aging is also the most significant demographic shift taking place in the Asia Pacific. UNFPA, together with other partners, we are fully committed to be part of these efforts and to ensure that the dialogue on aging shifts away from focusing on the cost and the burden of the elderly to recognize the enormous contribution that older persons can make to sustainable development and economic growth. The World Health Organization representative to Sri Lanka, Dr. Razia Pence, stated the importance of developing and executing mental health care facilities and programs within the country. Pence also highlighted the important steps taken by the WHO to minimize the mental health issues island-wide. Dr. Rasia Pence expressed these views addressing a media gathering to announce the World Mental Health Day, which is scheduled to take place this month. The overall objective of the World Mental Health Day, which falls on October 10th every year, is to raise awareness of mental health issues and mobilize efforts in support of better mental health. This year, the World Mental Health Day 2017 will be held under the theme, Mental Health in the Workplace. Mental illnesses are so common, one in ten will have some form of it. Sri Lanka post-tsunami has really made huge strides in terms of having a mental health strategy, a mental health program, having more decentralized programs, taking it out of the hospitals into the communities. And now we have many health districts. And I have a few numbers here, like 22 health districts which have acute mental health care facilities, and 17 have intermediate care with residential facilities for people who are suffering. Most of the places have these centers where help is available. Important is, do people access these facilities? Do people know that these exist? And that it's not, you don't have to feel ashamed to seek help, because it's a condition which is treatable. Most mental illnesses are not curable, because you can relapse. And that's why a continuous engagement with health and help is important. The Global Mental Health Action Plan has been done by WHO. There are many resolutions in the World Health Assembly 
The Sustainable Development Goals explicitly talk about mental health. There is an increased understanding within ministries of health and other related ministries on setting up mechanisms, programs, policies, service delivery to reach out to people, which is a fantastic um, development. Let's take a look at more news after this break. Welcome back. The United Nations Specialized Agency for Industrial Development unveiled its way forward on industry framework of sustainable development goals recently in Colombo. The visiting New Delhi-based UNIDO regional representative elaborated on opportunities and challenges faced by businesses in order to meet sustainable development goals. The 193 member states of the UN universally adopted the Transforming Our World, the 2013 Agenda for Sustainable Development in 2015. The agenda is operationalized through 17 Sustainable Development Goals with 169 associated targets. It is the first time ever that the industrial sector has been explicitly included in the development agenda, specifically inclusive and sustainable industrialization, which is number nine in the Sustainable Development Goals. This reflects the widespread recognition that the industrial sector is indispensable for achieving inclusive and sustainable economic growth. Business needs the SDGs because the SDGs point to many areas where we can actually have improvements or new business opportunities. So as a, you can see the SDGs as a compass for business. So where does society want to go? Where can the industry then uh, lead with its development efforts? Then the other way is also true that the SDGs need business in a sense that uh, the opportunities which are, which are foreseen in the sustainable development goals can only be materialized if business part, as this business really sizes the opportunities. So that was the subset set first, sizing business opportunities. So if you then go for um, what it means for individual businesses, and this is work which I quote from the World Business Council for Sustainable Development, they say that there are basically four pillars where they can see as a business value. First of all is that if you do nothing and society moves on, as a business you will disengage from society, so there's a risk of inaction being there. You might invest in technologies which are not, law, uh, not demanded or markets which are not demanded in the future. Or you might further disenfranchise from the community and in that sense make yourself less popular as a, as a business. The second component is the positive one, so that is one of grasping opportunities. So if everybody has affordable housing, then we need to build housing, that's a business opportunity. The third one is more on discharging the accountability of uh, uh, corporations. So be accountable means that you're also accountable to uh, development needs and a broader range of uh, stakeholders. So then they went on to try to quantify the business opportunity that's there and they came up with the figure that achieving the SDGs uh, would create a market worth about 12 trillion US dollars by 2030 and has the potential to generate then 380 million new jobs at the global level. And this would require an investment of 2.4 trillion uh, US dollars annually over the 15 years period. Now we have few more stories in brief. Fashion Bug recently introduced two more fine homegrown brands with RBN, a unique performance wear brand catering sportswear, and Shakalaka, a conceptualized slogan-based trendy t-shirts at their latest outlet in Vallabhatta. The event was graced by local celebrity Pooja Oma Shankar and rugby captain Fasil Marja along with key fashion bug staffs and clients. As one of Sri Lanka's retail clothing chains, Fashion Bug has been recognized for its achievements as well as its wide range of clothing which caters to all ages and varying tastes. Fonterra Brands Sri Lanka, the company behind Anchor, recently launched another latest dairy innovation, Anchor Life Low Fat Milk Powder, focused on heart health. Anchor Life Low Fat Milk Powder has been specially formulated with plant sterols to help reduce blood cholesterol and provide omega-3 fatty acids 
dietary fiber and other important vitamins and minerals for heart health. It is the first specialized adult dairy product in Sri Lanka to include an ingredient that reduces blood cholesterol. Let's take a look at stocks after this break. Welcome back. Trading at Colombo Stock Exchange ended on a positive note today. The All Share Price Index gained 21.96 points to close at 6,529.05, and the SNPSL 20 Index gained 15.79 points to close the session at 3,797.43. The turnover was 922 million rupees and 23 million shares were traded. Let's take a look at today's forex rates. Now we have dealing room update for this week. The Sri Lankan rupee depreciated against the greenback this week as the import dollar demand gradually increases for the festive season. Spot rupee opened today at 153.30 to 153.40 per dollar compared with Monday's opening of 153.10 to 153.17. The one month premium was hovering at around 80 to 90 cents while the one year premium was trading around 9.10 to 9.30 rupees. On the international market, sterling fell 0.2% to 1.3088 pounds at one point on Friday, which is its lowest since September 7. Sterling has shed 2.2% this week, putting it on track for its worst weekly performance since October 2016. Sterling remained under pressure and slipped to a fresh four-week low on Friday, dented by worries over a possible leadership battle at the top of the British government. At the weekly Treasury bill auction held this week by the central bank, the rates of 6-month and 12-month rates increased by 7 and 22 basis points to 9.08 and 9.32% respectively. The 3-month bill was not offered this week. The overnight core money and repo rates were stable this week. The core money rates trading around 8.05 to 8.15%, while the overnight repo rates trading at around 7.90 to 8 levels this morning. The liquidity in the market was at a surplus of around 14 billion rupees by Wednesday. The treasury bond yields in the secondary market increased slightly this week. The 10-year bond maturing on the 15th of June 2027, trading at around 10.35 to 10.45% this morning. Thank you for watching State of Business. See you tomorrow with Biz Roundup at 7 p.m. Have a fantastic weekend. Take care. Good night.